When we use if, we must provide Swift with some kind of condition that will result in either true or false once that condition has been evaluated. If you want to have multiple conditions being checked, you can put them one after the other. For example, we could say, let age equal 16. If age is greater than or equal to 18, then print you can vote in the next election. And after that, if age is less than 18, print sorry, you're too young to vote. However, that's not very efficient code if you think about it, because our two conditions are mutually exclusive. If someone is greater than or equal to 18, which is the first condition, they can't be less than 18, our second condition. And the opposite is also true. So we're making Swift do extra work, doing two checks here, when only ever one of those two things can be true. Now in this situation, Swift provides us with a more advanced condition. Let us add an else block to our code. Some code to run if the condition is not true. Using else, we can rewrite this code. We'll remove the second condition, then bring it all up and put else in between. So now Swift only has to check age once. If age is greater or equal to 18, do the first one, otherwise immediately, i.e. less than, do the second one. You're too young to vote. So now really what we're doing here, if we boil our condition down, it looks like this. If some condition, print, this will be run if the condition is true, else this will be run if the condition is false. That's what it means. Now there is an even more advanced condition type called else if, which lets you run a new check if the first one failed. So we could say something like, if A, print code to run if A is true. But then if A is false, we'll do else if B. So this code we run if A is false, but B is true. And you can have multiple else ifs, else if C, else if D, else if whatever you want to. And then if you want to, you can combine it with an else as well to catch all other possible results. So here we'd say else, code we run if A and B are both false. So we have if, else if, and now else. And you can have as many else as you want, but just watch out your code doesn't get too complicated to read. Now, as well as using else and else if to make more advanced conditions, you can also check more than one thing at a time. For example, if we said, uh, if today's temperature is greater than 20 degrees Celsius and less than 30 degrees Celsius, print a message. So within its exact range of temperatures, print a message. And we could do that with some code. We could say something like, uh, let temp equals 25. If temp is greater than 20, then run some code. And in that code, we'll have another condition. If temp's less than 30, so what's our range? Finally print, it's a nice day. And that works well enough. You can use that code if you want to, but Swift provides a shorter alternative. We can write ampersand ampersand to combine two conditions together in the same check. And the whole condition will only be true if the two parts of it, the two subconditions, are true. So we could rewrite this. We could remove a lot of syntax, bring it all the way up to a single line, and use ampersand ampersand to get exactly the same result. Now you want to read ampersand ampersand when you're reading it aloud or in your head as and. So the whole condition reads if temp is greater than 20 and temp is less than 30. This is called a logical operator because it combines booleans, two booleans, temp greater than 20, temp less than 30, each produce a boolean, then combines them together. And if both are true, the whole thing is true. Now ampersand ampersand has a counterpart that is two pipe symbols, that's two vertical lines, uh, and that means or. So ampersand ampersand will be uh, true if both its sum conditions are true, otherwise it's false or pipe pipe is true if either one of its subconditions are true. For example, we could write some code for this. We could say um, a user can buy a game from the app store if their age is greater than 18 or equal to 18, greater or equal to um, 18, or if they are younger than 18, but they have their parents' permission, they can still buy the game. So we could do that in Xcode. We could say something like uh, let, user age equals uh, 14, 
let has parental consent equals true. And then if age is greater or equal to 18, which it is not, but we'll use pipe pipe, the or operator, has parental consent is true, then print you can buy the game. And that will work. I'll print you can buy the game. Because even though the first test, this one here returns false, this one will return true. And the or, the whole thing, this whole condition here, will return to true if left or right is true. In our case, right was true, so the whole condition becomes true. Now remember, using equals equals true in a condition can be removed because we're obviously checking for a Boolean already. So we can actually just write if age is greater than 18 or has parental consent. Now to finish up with checking multiple conditions, let's try a more complex example that combines if else if and pipe pipe all at the same time and even shows off how enums fit into conditions. In this example, we're going to build a new enum called transport option, which contains five cases. You can go by airplane, helicopter, bicycle, car, whatever you want. There's options galore, right? Um, you can decide your code, <laughs> right? So we'll go ahead and say in here um, our options first and we'll put that in a constant and run some checks. The first our uh, options we'll work with, I'll say as an enum called transport option. And then we'll have case airplane and helicopter and bicycle and car and then e-scooter. <laughs> Just to wrap up, wrap up nicely. So there's our conditions here, our, our, sorry, our cases here. And then we'll go ahead and add some checks. We'll say uh, if we're going via airplane or helicopter will print let's fly if it's bicycle we'll say i hope there's a bike path um if it's a car we'll say time periods are stuck in traffic otherwise e-scooter we'll get the point we'll print for things out so let's say after our enum uh let transport equals transport option dot airplane so if transport option or transport sorry is equal to dot airplane pipe pipe or transport is equal to dot helicopter then print out let's fly else if transport is equal to dot bicycle i'll do print uh, i hope there's a bike path else if transport is equal to uh, car print time to get stuck in traffic else and remember else here will only be run if all the previous cases have failed so it'll check this one first if that fails and check this one here if that fails check this one here and then finally if we are not airplane or helicopter or bicycle or car we must be e-scooter we'll print out oops crazy print uh i'm going to hire a scooter now Great. Now I want to pick out a few parts of that code, right? We set an initial value for transport up here in line 39. And we've got to be explicit. We mean transport option, our enum, dot airplane, a case in the enum. We cannot just write dot airplane because Swift doesn't know what dot airplane means. It doesn't know it belongs to transport option yet. Now it does. But once that's happened, everywhere else, we just write dot airplane, dot helicopter, dot car, dot bicycle, and so forth, because Swift knows transport must be some kind of transport option. We gave it that type. The type is transport option. And so it knows it has to be uh, a transport option. So we can just write dot airplane and so forth. This pipe symbol here will check whether transport is airplane or helicopter. And if either one of those things are true, the whole thing is true, and therefore a print let's fly. It's airplane here. Similarly, helicopter will also work. It'll also print let's fly. If this first condition fails, if it's not airplane and not helicopter, then the second condition is checked. Are we bicycle? And it goes to car, and if they all fail, everything else fails, it'll finally print out, I'm going to hire a scooter now.